If you ever want to veer off and do a Frank Stallone podcast, let me know. <laughs> no, that won't happen. <laughs> Any of you people out there that find humor in this, you're really a sick, vapid person. You got no soul. Do you think it's funny? This is a sick society. This has gone beyond the pale. <laughs> you people should be ashamed of yourself. Dom. Dom. What are you doing? Uh, are you doing uh, me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Dom. <laughs> Dom. <laughs> All the greatest hits coming out. What else you got? What else you got? <laughs> we have more to do. We have more to do. <laughs> My sister's turning into a freaking loser, Rocco. <laughs> I'm turning into a freaking loser doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, Sly, what are they going to do to your wife? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, wow. We haven't done that in a while. They were going to rape her 50 times. I cut their fucking heads off, Ryan. <laughs> Look, guys, we know the day has come. The day has come day for has come. Uh, for Dom to leave the show. Um, I mean, will he ever be, ever be back? I, I would probably say probably never, somewhere down the line. <laughs> you never know. I mean... How long does this Frank Sloan coverage take place? I don't know. I will say that this is part two. It's not even part two of two. There's <laughs> going to be a part three. And so part three, maybe part three or three, but part oh, three boy. will be will be Doug. Doug's debut Okay, will be part three. So that's kind cool, of a good cool. way to him for him to come yeah. in. And so we got stuff to cover, though. But, Dom, I'm telling you, you leaving is breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart. Maybe this last <laughs> plea will make you stay. Maybe this last plea. Right. <laughs> Please don't go. Don't go. <laughs> Great song. Don't go. I'm begging you to stay. Oh, I know. Heartbreaking. I'll be around, Ryan. You know. You know I know. We'll I know. We're going to do other shows together. Like I said, I've got other podcasts that I do. Other little side, little mini projects that I do where I'm always looking for yeah, yeah. co-hosts. We'll collaborate again. Uh, we I'm did get sure one email. Collaborate. Only one. Only one person cares about uh, you leaving. One, <laughs> one person. <laughs> Frank Stallone saying, thank God he's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Rocco. Rocco's a big time listener of my Rambo shows, the Rocky shows, and of course the Frank Stallone show. He's the one that wrote the uh, Rocky trivia book. Oh, awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, I'll tease this. If you were listening, especially if you're listening to this Ooh. episode on the Rambo feed, I think I can say this. Rocco's working on a Rambo tri- trivia book. Oh, okay. So, Dom, we'll have to have you back on just for like a bonus. Like, let's do some trivia yeah, together. Yeah. Like, do a few of those. Yeah, maybe just like, okay. Well, we can do like um, a retro trivia uh, reminiscent, and then we'll do like a first blood episode and so forth. We'll go right, through the right. trivia together. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'll get some other people to join and have like a little game of it too or something. That'd be cool. Okay. That'd be cool. Okay. So yeah, if you're on the Rambo feed, don't leave because when that Rambo trivia book comes out, we'll do a bonus content. If you if you ever get your whiskey, <laughs> if you ever get Man. your whiskey, we can do a tasting. <laughs> That's still my goal and hope. But these guys are ghosts to me. Yeah, I still have tried to reach out to the uh, Wild Skies whiskey. Still the can't even believe it. No, they don't check their messages. Uh, they haven't blocked me yet. I keep bugging them. I just I last message I left them Surprising. was about. A, Two weeks ago, I said, hello, any updates, please? Nothing. They didn't even look at it. Okay. So Rocco gives us an email. He says, hey, guys, just wanted to start by saying how much I've enjoyed the podcast. I also wanted to say how sad I am to see Dom go. Every day when I return home from school, I would look forward to listening to the latest episode of The Ramble or the Frank Stallone podcast. (laughs) I'm sure Doug will do a great job taking over for Dom. Keep up the great work, Rocco. There you go. Definitely. I mean, thanks for the kind words, Rocco. Yeah, Rocco's great. Uh, yeah, he's a great guy, great kid. I mean, he must be. Um, his dad also listens to the show. They're great uh, support. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I think we did get a a YouTube comment maybe about your departure. One sec. This is through that bald bastard. I'm glad he's leaving. <laughs> yeah, 
pretty much. <laughs> this is from Christian. Christian says, hi, guys. Just great podcast as always. Nothing. Sorry, man, am I reading? I'm just my tears in my eyes. Now there's <laughs> something I noticed recently while consuming too much Frankster content. So this is interesting. He says, it seems like he had a little nip and tuck done recently. Ooh, good catch. If you scroll. Yeah, this guy is, this guy is really digging deep. Well, we thought we dug deep into his Instagram. Christian's <laughs> digging deep. He says, if you scroll back on his Instagram, you'll notice his neck being visibly tighter since around about June. Wow. And uh, he goes on wow. to say, maybe he had a little work done around the eyes as well. Just wanted to share this interesting development with you. By the way, sad to see Dom go. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for the kind words. Okay. Well, speaking of kind words, Dom, we got some unkind words. <laughs> Not un <laughs> well, I would say unkind words. Our <laughs> words might have been viewed as unkind. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> so Don doesn't know this. So if you're, <laughs> I wanted to drop this on Dom live on the camera. Oh here. boy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what a farewell. Uh, this is a big episode, folks. We got a lot to cover today. It's partly why this is only be part two of maybe three or four because we're going to get into the interview with Frank and Pop Crime TV host Lauren. And speaking of Lauren, Dom, she reached out to me. Oh boy. She reached out to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dom's face. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, no. So I want to be clear about a couple things. Okay. So first off, yes, she reached out to me. I don't want to spoil the ending here. So I, I got I want to try to tell the narrative as it happened. Okay. So she wasn't very happy. She she was not very happy oh, at all with boy. her coverage of, of her. And why was this? Could, I, I can't see anything wrong <laughs> with our coverage. Well, yes, of course. We'll we'll get into that. So she reached out to us saying that she got a notification that we covered her podcast. Now, I will admit, I think what happened was I tagged her when I originally uploaded the video uh, before it went public, but then I untagged it because I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, no, I'm not trying. Well, we're going to get to that. I, I didn't want to be like, ah, I don't want to make this a thing because I don't think we've tagged other podcasts that we've done. But I think okay. it was too late. Even though I untagged it, I think it was too late. I think she got the notification regardless, even though I untagged it. So it, the video went public and she sent a message. Now, I'm not going to read the whole back and forth, but if you want to, go to Frank Stallone, Who Is This Guy, episode 32 on our YouTube page, and you can see the whole, Oof. I don't say back and forth, but the whole her thoughts on our coverage and my response. Overall, Dom, she wasn't too happy with our criticisms and our banter and comedic effect that we use. Now, Lauren, she and I have talked since then, so I'm not verbally, but back and forth. I, I assume she's going to probably be listening to this. So I just want to say this. Lauren, Dom is an actual sweetheart. Dom is a true, true sweetheart. He's like the sweetest guy I personally, one of the sweetest guys I know. And I like to think I am too, but I also really enjoy roasting humor. Like I enjoy that type of like the Tom Brady roast. Like when you watch that roast, it's like brutal. The mm. things they say to Tom Brady, for example, and that is crazy brutal, right? But it's funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, but the idea mm. of the guys who are doing the roasting, they don't truly feel that way. They don't truly want to harm Tom Brady, both professionally, personally, or, or physically, obviously. But so, <laughs> but their jokes are cutting, and they're scathing, and they're deep. But they're funny. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not a funny person like these professional comedians. These are professional comedians. You and I, we don't rehearse. We don't come up with bits right, before right, we start right. we literally just mm -hmm. watch things kind of live and mm -hmm. we react and whatever little humor we have just comes off the top of our top of our head so sometimes it comes off funny or it might come off more scathing than it should now i say all this dom and i for all joking aside and this includes frank our intent is never to cause harm absolutely not absolutely not so our jokes can sometimes be piercing maybe revealing but our jokes are never meant to actually make the person frank the Cal Sills podcast, Fletcher, oh, uh, Tercio. <laughs> so some of these other podcasts that we've covered that Frank has been on, we unknowingly kind of had content from the podcaster. Like we went into the podcast to, you know, roast Frank, but unbeknownst to us, we kind of had some fun with the podcast hosts. Mm -hmm. uh, even what's his face? The, uh, the guy from Saved by the Bell, their podcast. Oh, uh, Mario Lopez. Yeah, you know, we roasted him a bit too, right? So it just depends on who they are. Anyway, right, so right. Lauren, bless her sweet, sweetheart, she was a, an innocent bystander in the fact that she had Frank on, 
but she kind of got caught in the crosshairs of our comedic styling that we've done with other podcasts. Mm. She was like number six of like whoever. Like we were already in that kind of flow where we have a podcast, Frank's on it. We watch the podcast cold, and then oh boy, this is giving us content that we didn't think we we're going to get. I.e., the technical difficulties, mm -hmm. things like that. Okay, she did mention that she only. I think she only watched her part of the roast <laughs> because <laughs> she, she said that we spend a lot of time like kind of roasting her, not Frank. And I'm like, well, you have to watch the whole video because Frank takes over. And to be fair to Lauren, as this interview goes on, and you'll see it today in part two. There actually is no Lauren content, and I don't mean that in a good or bad way. She was almost not her fault. Frank just takes over the show. Like, mm -hmm. he just... That dominating presence that Frank is, he always takes over whatever he's on. Steamrolls. Yeah, he steamrolls mm -hmm. over the whole show, no matter what Lauren says. And to Lauren's credit, I'm not just saying this because it had some technical, the, uh, or sort of technical struggles at the beginning that we had made light mm -hmm. of, had fun with. But as the show progressed, Lauren actually pushed back on Frank on a couple of times and a couple of parts about things that he brought up and put Frank back. She challenged Frank on a couple of things that he had said. So to Lauren's credit, she recuperated, but we never got to that part in the, <laughs> in the, in the right. interview. Right, right. The, the, yeah. The majority of part one was kind of Lauren's hiccups. We made light of it. And uh, so I say all this because Lauren and I have actually been talking back and forth on email and she was actually going to come on today to talk to us and to ah. crack wise with us. And, <laughs> and instead and, uh, she told you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, she's at a wedding this morning. She actually had a wedding this morning, but she's actually agreed to come on one of my other shows that I do. Oh I'll boy. The, uh, I'll actually link the show in my, in the show notes. If anybody wants to see my other show, I do called the worst, of the best podcast. It's a fun podcast. I do with my brother and she's agreed to come on that. And I think, I, I think I'm going to be guesting on one of her pop crime TV episodes. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so that just Amazing. goes to show, guys. We're like a moonlighting episode. You know, Bruce, uh, Bruce Willis, and <laughs> Bruce Willis, Sybil uh, Shepard. That's right. Bruce Shepherd. Willis and Sybil Shepard. They they were butting heads at the beginning of the series, mm -hmm. but they were making love right. at the end. Not, not that. No, right. Lauren. Whoa, 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 whoa! Slow down. <laughs> Slow down, right? <laughs> but yeah, I think it's fantastic. So I think she's just a very sweet person. I think what happened was when you got guys like the other podcast that we roasted, like. Uh, Mike and Rob Fletcher, these other guys, Rob Fletcher, that's not Mike Fletcher. Rob Fletcher, How you Mike doing, Fletcher. Frank, come on, Frank, Rob Fletcher. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they were just, they were just such characters in of themselves. Lauren's actually a very sweet, she is a very sweet person. She just literally got caught in the crosshairs of our comedy. So, <laughs> no. Lauren, accept our apologies. We meant, truly meant no harm. It was for comedic fodder. Some things land, some things don't. But uh, you're, you're awesome. Uh, we look forward to actually, we look forward to collaborating with you in the future if that still holds. So, yeah. Don, please. And we could always find our unity together making fun of Frank. That always works. Yes. She did want to say that she truly likes Frank and she thinks he's a genuine nice person. And that's fine. That's great. And I we like Frank. That's I thing. love Frank. That's why I'm leaving because I started to hate Frank. <laughs> that's right. What what is it? You're trying to turn on the monster, the Frankenstein monster. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so that was actually a fun little bit of news. That was quite a dramatic couple of weeks for me. I, I was dealing with this on the side. I didn't want to deal with Domin because he's such a sweet guy. I didn't want to get you all worried about it. So I got it <laughs> not resolved, but we listened to each other, and I did explain to her, yes, like because she doesn't know us from Adam. She doesn't know our background. Oh, she yeah. Know, she doesn't know how we got where we got, kind of the journey of things. It's just like we were already a moving train of a podcast that <laughs> she kind of jumped on mid and like, whoa, what the heck's going on around here? It's Frank very Stallone dramatic. hijacked the train at some point. So Frank's very aware of our show, so, and he he's Ooh. good to go. So we'll continue today. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I do this at the beginning because maybe people are going to lose okay. interest. I want to keep people's interest before they, they bow out of this episode. Dom, before we get into the uh, part two of Lauren and Frank's interview, Frank, on his Instagram, he mm. recorded off his TV using his cell phone. <laughs> Right. It's it either his TV or his, or his computer laptop or something. Yeah. He recorded an acting scene, scene from a movie that he was in. Could you, could you call it acting? Well, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to set this up. Come on. So what I love is Frank chose to show us, the public, mm -hmm. this clip that he was in yes. a film. One of, his 80, one of his 81 films. I don't know which film it was. Do you remember what film it might have been? Mm, I didn't get the title. No. Okay. He, he doesn't name the movie, and I guess a better Ooh. podcast would have the title ready to go, but I'll give you guys <laughs> what he said here. He said, me, this is him talking, me in Mike Hammer. 
<laughs> this sounds like a soft porn movie. <laughs> well, the way this film looks, it looks like it's an adult film. <laughs> my camera. <laughs> that is hilarious. Me and my camera. <laughs> what is this? So Mike Hammer apparently is a fictional character created by the American author Mickey Sp- Spilani. Hammer debuted mm-hmm. in 1947, so it's a book series. Okay, it's like a, I guess it's like a film noir version of a James Bond type. Uh, um, okay. Oh, I think I found it. Wow, it was a TV series that we're looking at here. It's okay. called Mike Hammer Private Eye. Songbird Part One was the episode. Ooh. And Frank Stallone played a character called Johnny Dive. <laughs> it lasted for two seasons. Oh, there you go. That's not bad. Yeah, 97 to 98. Okay, there we go. I found out. So it was a TV series called Mike Hammer, Private Eye. Mike Hammer, Private Eye. <laughs> Frank is playing, I guess, a baddie, some sort of mobster type baddie that is being grilled by the police. He says here it was in the 90s. It was a great experience. Stacy Keach and the whole cast are great to me. I always play the bad, never the tennis pro, LOL. That's what he says there in his <laughs> bio. So we're now going to show you the clip of Frank acting. But I guess we should tell the audience, Dom, that you tried out for this part as well. Is that correct? I did. I tried it. It just didn't work out. Obviously, they wanted to go with somebody more star power, Frank Stallone. So. He got the role. Oh, okay. Fair enough. But let's look at Frank's uh, finished product. And then we're Dom, we're going to look at your uh, demo reel or your cast. What do you call it? Your trying to play the part? Uh, casting? Yeah, my, yeah, my audition, audition, audition. My audition. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, before we get to your audition, there's a couple things. First, we're going to show the Frank clip, you know, the raw, unedited episode of TV. <laughs> Him recording it from his cell phone to his laptop now. Or I, I think it's his TV or something. You'll see, guys. Dom, did you catch what happened in this video? Like, I heard something at the end. I was like, ooh. <laughs> There's something at the end. I don't know what it is. There is. Is that what you're talking about? Hey, yes. Yeah, I don't know if I want to spoil it but because, okay, I'll just spoil it. He's holding the phone. It's, it's dark in his room. He's holding the phone to his TV, recording this TV episode that he's in. The camera starts moving really bad at the end, like his, his phone. <laughs> He started to fall asleep. <laughs> right, that's what it was. It's like snoring or something. You hear me? Frank's like, oh. snoring. He's recording himself for one minute on TV, and he was so bored that he fell asleep during his own scene. It's funny because when you sent it to me, I didn't see the post, so I thought you recorded it. So I was like, what the hell's happening at the end of this clip? I thought, like, you, were, I thought you were dying or something. No, it's uh. Frank recording himself. So Frank fell asleep recording himself. That's how Amazing. intense the scene is. I want to talk to my mouthpiece. No, you're going to talk to us now. Hey, look, I can jerk off to you. I know my rights. We took this earlier tonight. It's fantastic. You Johnny died with a gym bag full of money and a warehouse full of narcotics. My boys picked up your posse about an hour ago. Johnny, you're going down. Third strike. You're never getting out. I'll kill myself before I go into camp. What's the matter, Johnny? Got enough garlic in the prison mess? Hey, you know what? Hey, hey, sit down, sit down. Skip, sit down. Look at this. Tough guy. Let's say treat taxpayers. Obviously, you confused him with an umpire. That's a big mistake. One phone call from me, a federal drug task force walks through that door, and you're walking from Noriega until pigs fly. Hey, do what you gotta do. Call. I don't care. Do. Call. So, did you hear the story? (laughs) 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 No, I isolated the clips. I kind of sweetened the sound just a bit so you could hear Frank started falling asleep. I love it. As one should, as one should. He's like totally reenacting what the audience did watching this show Thursday <laughs> nights at 10 o'clock. Obviously, if you confuse him with an umpire, that's a force walks through that door, you're walking from Noriega and takes fly. Ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely astounding. Is that amazing? He fell asleep. I love it. Okay. So, uh, Frank, God, I love Frank. I love him so much. See, this is why we love you, Frank. We truly love you. This is amazing. <laughs> Okay, now, Dom, are you okay? I don't want to show this clip if you're not comfortable with me sharing your audition. This didn't no, make you. Yeah, I tried. I even found out that Frank Stallone was auditioning, so I went to his hair people. I had them work with my hair a little bit and, you know, give me some of that style. So it just didn't work out. I mean, it's something I think about often, but it is what it is. Okay. All right. Well, here it is. Let's check it out. On a blockbuster. Yeah. 
I want to talk to my mouthpiece. No, you're going to talk to us now. I look like a jerk off to you? I know my rights. We took this earlier tonight. It's fantastic. You Johnny died with a gym bag full of money and a warehouse full of narcotics. My boys picked up your posse about an hour ago. Johnny, you're going down. Third strike. You're never getting out. I'll kill myself before I go in the can. What's the matter, Johnny? Got enough garlic in the prison mess? Hey, you know what? <laughs> hey, hey, sit down, sit down. Skip, sit down. Look at this. Tough guys. That's how you treat taxpayers? Obviously, it confused you with an umpire. It's a mistake. walks through that door and into a big fly. Hey, hey, do what you gotta do. Call. I don't care. Do what you gotta do. Wow. Thank well, at you. least they they liked it. The, yeah, uh, they liked it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> they, yet again, they went with somebody with a name, and and his hair was slightly faker than mine, so they were able to cool. do what they wanted to do to it. I thought you did a great job. I think you got a long uh, career ahead of you in the acting. Thank you. Yeah. In fact, Thank that's you. probably why you're leaving the show is to chase the dream. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pursue. I'm getting on uh, MC Hammer or whatever the show is called. I'm getting I'm getting a reboot going. Well, without further ado, let's uh, continue the uh, part two here of the yes. Apple coverage. Frank was very close, but didn't blow his brains out. Much like the <laughs> crypto. <laughs> I'll blow my brains out. Ever since I was a little kid playing music, you know, we won the battle of the bands. So we were always like really a good group and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. we just got crushed. I mean, overnight, I became like a uh, non-person, just being Rocky's brother. And, you know, and at, uh, at that point, it kind of... I'm also a non-person. We're all just non-people. I'm not a celebrity. Mm -hmm. His measure of worth is the fact that he's not the celebrity that his brother is. Right, right. And he always goes back to the battle of bands in high school when he was probably 17. <laughs> I, too, am a non-person. Dom, are you a non-person? <laughs> I'm a non-person. I'm a non -person. That's what I identify as a non-person. Actually, that's the opposite <laughs> of a celebrity. A celebrity, <laughs> non-person. <laughs> Like a friend of mine that's in the record business, he finally watched Stallone Frank. That is, he goes, "I'm I'm amazed you haven't blown your brains out." <laughs> wow! Is that wow. a compliment? Is that like, what is that? Frank was basically saying, like, you've done all this stuff and you haven't been recognized. I'm surprised you you Kurt Cobain aren't up there together. <laughs> oh my god. Why is everything always negated by what Stallone did? Yeah, speed of Kurt Cobain, Rocky was the grunge to Frank's hair metal. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> We'd still be playing if it wasn't for Kurt Cobain and we the grunge. Can't. Ridiculous. Oh. I like again. I believed in myself, and I mean, you know, I've had way more setbacks than you know successes, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. whiskey is one of them. That's a setback recent. Very true, Frank. Please, what's the deal with the Frank's bourbon? I gave 50 US dollars as a Canadian to a company, Dom, and they took my money. They just took and my they money. They took your money. And that's the thing about Frank. Like, listen, we love Frank. We bash Frank. But I think Frank should have went all the all the advertising, all the T-shirts, Frank Stallone's whiskey, all the promotions. He should have went on his Instagram and admitted that the company went away. Something didn't work out. He could have simply said that. Even if just to acknowledge people that were buying the whiskey, just say, all right, it, it didn't work out. There was a problem with the deal. There's not going to be Frank Sloan whiskey. I think he Agreed. should have been a man and did that, but he didn't, unfortunately. I don't think I'm the only person. In fact, I think uh, no, you can't Rocco, be. Rocco mm -hmm. uh, and his dad, I think they're still waiting for their whiskey. They're, and That's they crazy. live in New York. So it's That's not, crazy. It's not, I got lucky. A, I got very lucky. lucky. I'm not the only person. Let me know, folks. Am I the only person other than Rocco? Taryn wanted to know, where can you watch Stallone? Frank, that is. So this is crazy. So Lauren asks a question from the audience. Like, where can we see this? Where can see, we're ta You're talking about a documentary? Great question. Where can we watch this? Frank gives the, <laughs> the, the wrong information. <laughs> it's in theaters now. Playing. <laughs> it's streaming on Amazon Prime, I think. Okay, Lauren's right. That's the right it's, answer. Yeah. It's streaming on Amazon Prime. Not in Canada, unfortunately. In Canada, you can rent it from the Apple Store. But on U.S. 
Amazon Prime. If you have a Prime membership, you can watch it for free. Frank disagrees with her and actually leads the public wrong. Laura gave the correct information, but Frank will now negate the correct information with this. You can rent it and yeah, definitely and Apple. Free. No, it's actually free. Oh, it is. Right. Yeah, it started oh. out as charge, but it's free. Okay. And you, you want. So Lauren's like, oh, it's free. Now she's probably thinking it's free, like franksloan.com or. Right, right. On YouTube somewhere. But Frank doesn't say where it's free. <laughs> Just that it's free. It, it, <laughs> if you find my apartment, I'll give you a free copy of it because I got a box of them. Maybe this is the problem with the uh, Frank's bourbon. He doesn't understand marketing, doesn't understand how things work. I, I don't know. I will admit that I was like, I did not know all this stuff about you. I had no idea. And it, you know, like that's you said. Lauren, what I, Lauren, that's what I hear from everybody. I swear oh. to God, they go, Oh, I didn't know you did that or did that or did that. That's why they called me the most unknown famous person in Hollywood or the <laughs> famous unknown person in Hollywood. But I have done a lot of stuff. And and that to me is really cool when people say that. It's the same thing when I do a concert. <laughs> it's such an odd, I'm the most famous unknown person there or the most unknown famous person. Basically, you're, yeah, Weird. you're a dealer celebrity. You're a dealer celebrity. You're just part of mm -hmm. many. The Kathy Griffins, the uh, Screech from uh, Saved by the Bell. Yeah, there's just so many celebrities that are just, you know, you were there, you had a blip, you had a moment, but life kind of goes on and you're just not that part of your life anymore. Celebrityism, the trail behind it, Dom, is full of casualties. Uh huh. Yeah, and I think he would be better off, Frank Stallone, like if he embraced it, you know, like he should be the kind of guy, like it's definitely not on his agenda. But I, I think he's the kind of guy, he should probably go to conventions and stuff and sign photos. I would go meet Frank Stone at a convention. <laughs> and there are people that do that. I mean, I see it on my Facebook all the time. Celebrities that were once, whatever, like on Three's Company or something. Like, they just go right, to Right, uh, right. They, they embrace it. Just like, hey, why not get an extra thousand yeah. bucks for a meet and greet day? Sure. Walk yeah. that with my royalties mm -hmm. and have fun. Meet the fans. And it's it would be very right. ingratiating to meet these fans of, like, in fact, it was Joyce DeWitt. I just saw it on Facebook. She's, you know, 70-something uh -huh. now. Lovely older gal. She looks wonderful for her age. No plastic surgery on her face. And she's uh, from Three's Company. And fans line up to see and say hi. Thanks for yeah. giving me, you know, seven seasons of exactly. fun when I was a kid, you know. And mm -hmm. like, there's no shame in that. No shame. That to me is really cool when people say that. It's the same thing when I do a concert. Oh, I didn't know you sang and played guitar. So, well, what did you think I did? Okay. Again, very <laughs> revealing. It's like when I play a concert. Right. I didn't know you could sing or play the guitar. Who goes <laughs> to a concert unaware of what the artist does? <laughs> right, right. What was the last concert you just went to? I went to the Killers. Now, were you unaware that Brad Flowers sang? <laughs> I was I was unaware. I was like, I, I actually tried to find them to talk to them because I was like, I didn't know this is why I was here. <laughs> Ridiculous. Man, Frank. You're basically revealing again that you play at gigs where you're not the event. Like you're not the reason why people are there. There are people there and you are playing music there. And people are like, hey, that's that guy Frank Stallone. I thought you were just on the uh the Mike Hammer TV show. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what it was. They bet he's best known for the Mike Hammer and Tombstone, obviously. They didn't know he was performing. I don't I, you know, I, I don't know what they thought I did for a living. And right, right. And, uh, but I think, of course, some of the things they say are hurtful and, you know, I didn't know you were still alive. <laughs> you know, I gotta say, and I know we talked about this a little bit last time, but like, cause he's holding the camera, <laughs> you realize the struggle that he's trying to keep those golden records in the shot. He could easily put it on like the table, you know, put the camera on the table and just have his face being prominent, but he wants to show the records, so he's tilting it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. You're right. I love it. And there's more gold record in the screen than Frank. <laughs> exactly. It's just his eyebrows, basically, and he's talking. <laughs> hey, Frank, can we just interview your records at this point? <laughs> but, you know, there, you just can't take everything personally, because, you. I mean, who's it coming from? Is it someone that really matters? Not really. Oh, is that a dust Dom? <laughs> Shots fired. Is it my son who I stopped yeah, talking uh, to because he went on these guys' podcasts? Yeah, you almost would want to say your son might matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
but we don't matter that's for sure and and i'm glad lauren and i have you know shaken hands and made up so to speak because this is true because lauren agrees with this because frank says hey if they're taking shots at you they don't matter we don't matter in the grand scheme of things dom and i don't matter we're nobody so if we do take shots at you know rob fletcher or, or tushia or alex the trainer like we don't matter what we say it doesn't come on, matter frank what one more say, frank one more say. come on we might have a relationship so, great, great and, point and I've basically been on my own. I mean, I never, I always had bad management, I always had bad, but I've never had anyone, you know, a lot of these acts. That- we really should have started like some sort of spreadsheet of the reasons why he's failed. <laughs> There's a lot of him like just pointing fingers. He just does that a lot. Like I had bad management. A lot of these people, you know, the Eagles didn't have a brother that got famous the same year their album came out. <laughs> That's right. It's never my music didn't resonate. Right. Like, like the reason why Bruce Springsteen is as big as he is is because he had good management. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't his songs. He had hit after hit. <laughs> it wasn't his song singing uh, composition ability or Billy Joel or uh, right. any of these guys that have lasted for right. 40, almost 50 years. It's just, you know, they've had good management. The Stones, good right. management. And, and people always start like, you know, I, I think it was Billy Joel's first couple of albums like weren't successful. You know, oh. and then he eventually started striking. So it's like you just stayed in that unsuccessful thing, Frank, and then you just <laughs> never, you know. <laughs> well, he said himself, 17 years. He did. He was doing this for 17 years before Rocky came out. Right. And the, the only reason he got a bump was because of his brother's famous film. Mm-hmm. But it was because Frank's never had good management. Now, who hires your management? You. <laughs> okay, exactly. He's definitely like people didn't come to him saying, hey, I'll be a good manager to you. You have to go find the management that works mm-hmm. for you, Frank. At the same time, it's not up to management to find you. It's like you need a job, but you're waiting for people to come to your house to say, are you looking for work? Right, or right. You have to mm-hmm. go out there and find these people. They're successful, like the Eagles or stuff. like. That. They always had a great <laughs> team around them. I never had a team around me, so basically... You need a manager. You need a manager. <laughs> he needed, <laughs> he needed uh, George Washington Duke from Rocky Five. Is what he needed. <laughs> you know why they didn't write about me? Because uh, they're the Eagles. Nah, you need a manager. <laughs> <laughs> they put a nail in my glove and it punched me in the ass. <laughs> yeah, they put a nail in my guitar strings and I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Bleeding from my fingers on the stage, you see. <laughs> There's a photo of me I playing next to the Eagles. <laughs> so, you know, why are they write about the Eagles and not me? They're, uh... Uh, they had better songs than you, Frank. Nah! <laughs> <laughs> nah, Take It Back was just as good as Take It Easy. <laughs> Myself, I never could get good management, good agents, and things like that. And, yeah. uh, you know, and same thing in movies. I mean, it's amazing that I've done 81 movies. You know, and some the old quantity versus quality, Dom. Like Nicolas Cage done 50 films in two years. I don't get it. Or Bruce Willis, his last 40 films. You know, I don't understand. Why aren't people? It's called quantity and quality, folks. Look at Quentin Tarantino. 10 films. Mm -hmm. He he might not be a very good director, Dom. Right. (laughs) But there's also a difference, too, in the roles he's playing. I mean, you know, we joke about the tombstone thing. He's saying that one of those is a movie, but he's not a significant role. It's a bit part. It's not like somebody like uh, Eric Roberts, who's in like 150 movies, (laughs) but he's in like small talking, kind of like a sizable role in those movies. But he's a working actor, too. Yeah, Frank, you're not the star of these films. You've been in 81 Mm -hmm. films, almost an extra in some of these, quite frankly, speaking of Frank. But how many films have you started? Like your brother has starred Mm. in almost as many films. Like he's the star, good or bad. Frank, you've been in films. You've worked in the industry. Your name is on IMDb. But we'd have to, let's just right now, let's just see what was the last film Frank Stallone starred in. Like he is first on the bill, right? Uh, he has three upcoming films. So we've got Veterans Day. Veterans Day, yes. Remember that movie? We showed like a, a private showing of the trailer, Birth of the Black Underworld. Remember that? Yes, my God. Yes, I remember. That's still a post-production. Veterans Day is in development. And then he's got another one coming out called Where's Carson? So, Dom, you're coming back on the show because we're <laughs> we're doing some of his films. Regardless, oh, we're going to vet- do some film vet- you. Veterans Day. I mean, I hope that eventually comes out. I was waiting for that one. He was in a, um, there's something here called Death Aquarium. A <laughs> virus turns sea creatures in the aquarium into zombies. Mm. And he plays General Rambo. 
Oh, he plays General Ooh. Rambo. There is one review, two out of ten. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I was more insane. And I had time. I would love to go through his filmography and just edit, get every scene of him actually in the movie and edit them all together and see what that equates to. I almost saw the same thing. I know he was in Barfly. She actually brings up Barfly quickly here. And that was his Mm -hmm. kind of that was his Rocky. That was his Magnus Opus was Barfly. He was decent in the film. I still haven't seen it, but everything I've heard about the film is that he's good in it. And the movie's okay. good. It's probably good writing, good directing. Like it's a decent '80s flick, right? So that's cool. Mm-hmm. And I understand it's one of his biggest films that where it, he's the least Frank Stallonius. But he's kind of been like we saw in that clip at the beginning of the show of him that that's his acting. It's kind of right, cheesy, right. hammy, over the top. Right. It's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. That's just his style. But it's not going to win any Academy Awards. Mm-hmm. Holy you know? moly! Well, you you know. You're saying holy moly to how many films he's been in. Again, mm-hmm. not starring. He's just been in film. Yeah, yeah. Barfly is a, a great one. I don't know if anyone uh, saw Frank in Barfly, but mm-hmm. that's a great one. And someone this morning on Twitter reminded me, uh, they're like, ask him about, it was, it was Steve, it was publicly buzzed. He said, ask him about uh, doing the episode of um, Tales from the Crypt. Oh, that was great with John Stamos. Oh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. I was playing a mob killer with a bad back, you know. <laughs> it's like life I, and art, art and life. <laughs> I got to go back and watch that. I love Tales from the Crypt. I don't. I don't remember the episode, honestly. Really, you don't. You don't remember Frank Sloan's? Uh, no, guess it didn't stand. <laughs> it didn't stand out. <laughs> John was a wonderful guy. Really nice guy. Great personality. Dude, well, and I hate it when people do this with celebrities. It's funny. We, you always hear about this. Oh, I met so and so, and they were so nice. I love mm-hmm. how celebrities kind of get this weird pass of, oh, isn't that cool that Brian Cranston's a nice guy? Well, I just hope so. Like I right, right. I work with a bunch of coworkers. Oh, John is so nice, or Carl is so nice, or Steve is so like imagine mm-hmm. if you spent your day going through all your coworkers and other like, hey, <laughs> nice guy, great guy. Great guy, nice guy, great. Okay, can I just get the donut from the uh, coffee break room, please? Like, <laughs> but I love how celebrities there are this. Oh, really? A celebrity was nice? Wow. No, they're just humans, too, that are popular, and a lot of people know them, but mm-hmm. guess what? There's a-hole celebrities, and there's... But I love how right. when you find out a celebrity was nice, we go, oh, that's a wonder. Oh, that's great. He's, right? he's yeah. not a complete piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my Uber driver was great. He's a nice guy. Uber driver, nice guy. I gave him five stars. Nice guy. Mm-hmm. And then Fred Claus with Vince Vaughn, I did... Uh... Funny enough, I think in the Fred Claus film, wasn't that about the scene with... Yes, the- we definitely talked about it off air. I've seen the movie once, back when it came out. Wasn't it about like their brothers, the, the brothers of... Yeah, it's people? like a, it's like these siblings of famous people. He's in like a group. It's like almost like a Alcoholics Anonymous kind of situation oh. where they're sitting around and they're talking. and He's essentially <laughs> playing the most real character he's played. <laughs> exactly, so he leans into it. That's what we're getting at. Lean into it. Have fun with it. Well, I did you know, Hudson Hawk with Bruce Willis. So I'm have you noticed what he's doing here. He's mentioned all these that we talked about. He didn't star in the, it's not like Bruce Willis starred with Frank, right? That's what he's implying though. He's implying it was the two faces on the poster. It was Bruce Willis, Frank Stallone. Like I love the one film that he shares with Bruce Willis is one of Bruce Willis's. Mm. <laughs> it's not die hard. <laughs> It's not a very good film. I, I don't want to hear these contraries. Oh, it's a great. Th- oh, come on. Stop it. Go on the head to head yeah. with a lot of good actors. You know, I've gone head to head with a lot of great actors. Again, uh, yes, you've been in some films with great actors, but going head to head. He's talking like he's like Al Pacino, Robert De Niro and heat. You know, right. right. He's talking about it like he's the scene that they play at the Oscars. Somebody's nominated and like they have that key scene that they play for the audience. Like he's in those scenes with the actors. <laughs> like there will never be a universe where a Frank Stone clip is ever shown at an Oscar. It's just, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Happen. It's okay. If you don't have a good team behind you it's that believe in you, you know, you have to kind of do everything on your own. It's if you don't have a good team behind you. There you go. Nobody believes. <laughs> Nobody believes. <laughs> Always. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not trying to. No one believes in me either. Like, this is the thing. <laughs> I, too, am not an actor. I'm not an actor. I don't have anyone in my life who ever got behind me. Ryan, I believe in you. I know you could be an actor or a singer. (laughs) My my dog believes in me. (laughs) The reason why they don't believe in you, Frank, is they don't see it. They don't see 
Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Bruce Willis, John Travolta, Nicolas Cage. They're not seeing those things. So there's no team that's behind, there's no one behind you. <laughs> it's okay. You're just not an actor. Not yeah. everyone can do everything. It doesn't matter how much you want it. It doesn't mean you can be it. That's all. Right. It sucks. It just sucks. I would love to be a rock star. Mm-hmm. Like if you could snap my fingers, right? right. Like you'll you'll be imbued with any talent and any fandom you want. Yeah. If I had mm-hmm. like Taylor Swift fandom, like level of fandom, and be a rock band, man, that'd be a right. what a great existence. I would love to snap my finger and have long, luxurious locks of hair. <laughs> But then you could join my band, Dom, because you'd have the proper exactly, hair. Exactly, exactly. I can't hire you if you're bald. I, uh, <laughs> the hair metal the hair, band. The hair metal band. What do you think this is, Coldplay? Get out of here with that bald <laughs> It's like a great fighter. You'd be the best fighter, but if you're not getting the fights and no one's seeing it. Tell that the club were laying. He was ranked number one. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Number <laughs> one. Uh. Hey, one month. Hey, one month. Spend some time with a real man. <laughs> Clever, are you talking to Lauren that way? Stop it. <laughs> Bad. And, and a lot of acts. That's how, why when I see these polls, all oh, the greatest guitar player. Yeah, it's the greatest guitar player you've seen. The reason you've seen them is because they're great. They're great. They're great. They rise to the top because of that. Good. Okay, now he's going to go into talking about, oh, you can go to bars in Tennessee and you'll see these people playing. They're playing amazing. I don't know how else to say it. People rise to the top from, yes, from the Beatles to the Rolling Stones to Taylor Swift of today, Beyonce, whatever genre they're in, they rise to their respective tops because they just are above and beyond those others who try to emulate or try to do what they do. Yeah, there's absolutely, there's luck of the draw. A certain person found you. A certain song clicked with the public and you build on that. There's so much luck involved. So yeah, go on YouTube. Forget the bars that Frank is going to talk about. Go on YouTube. You will see thousands of people who can play instruments very Mm -hmm. very well Mm -hmm. but they have to have a look the x factor a look Mm -hmm. charisma their own original ability not just i hate when people say oh i can play van hill and stuff it's not that complicated it's not about being complicated he composed it that's the difference right right right. that's right and i hate it when people say oh eddie's not that great he's not that complicated you know i'm a huge fan of and i'll defend him to the same day because he composed the sound people say oh he's not the first one to tap it's not about tapping the first but he created the image of it the sound of it he made it popular because he did something with it that right what beyond who created it that's mm-hmm. the whole point so you have to do something it's not just about ability frank it's like you might have the ability but do you have the star power do you have the it factor there you go is there mm-hmm. something about you that resonates above and beyond the person that can play better than you go on youtube put yourself out there and maybe you'll be the next jo- justin bieber the way he was discovered on youtube but the thing is right, a lot of right. people can sing a lot of people sing on youtube hoping to be discovered and yeah, best of luck to you. The meaning of everything, Frank, it just goes back to the, I could have been this if I had this, and I could have been that. I would have had a hit song if this happened. It's That's all it is. It's basically him trying to like be- take away credit from people that did make it. And yeah. He is explaining why he's not popular, but then at the same time, he didn't tear down people that are. Right. So which one is it? He's basically saying everyone that's popular shouldn't be, and he should be. <laughs> Yeah, like true. nobody listens to my podcast. Yeah, I admit, I I do a few podcasts. Nobody listens to it. Don, I admit, like I get mm-hmm. very few listeners. I get Rocco. It, I get Christian. I also know that my product is better than some podcasts that get, you know, ten thousand downloads. I get it. Right. I understand that. That's the luck I'm talking about. They, I don't right. know. They got an audience. I don't have an mm-hmm. audience. I'm the guy in the bar who can play like Frank says. But I'm aware of it. I'm not bitter. I'm having fun, but yeah, right, right. yeah. But I just, I just keep playing the bar because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy playing exactly. my guitar, so to speak. Exactly. But right. I've gone to bars in the, my many, many years in this business, and I've seen guys that like work at a muffler store playing guitar in a band at night that are better than anyone you ever heard in your life. But they just, you know, they're married. They have a family. But none of the rock and roll artists that we listen to are ever married or have families. <laughs> <laughs> they're all single. <laughs> I think Brandon Flowers is single, isn't he? I think yeah, he's yeah, with the family. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A, how was the show, by the way? Was it fun? Uh, it was great. I love the. I always. That's one of my favorite bands, The Killers. I'm always. I always see them, honestly, cool. over the years. 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah my, uh, my my brother's a big fan. I, I like their music. Yeah. I think if I went to a show, and I would have a good time and know a few of their songs. But uh, Yeah, they came out at like a pivotal age for me. I think their first album came out when I was like probably 17, and then I just followed them. Situation. They're still a new band to me. They're still like a new yeah, band. Oh, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. <laughs> me yeah. and my cousin even both followed them. So <laughs> Even though they've been up for like 20 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're guitar players, guys sitting in bars playing for $25 a night. Oh, so they're a dime a dozen. Oh, <laughs> exactly. They're a dime a dozen. Yeah. There's so many good guitar players. They have to do something mm-hmm. different than just being a good. Exactly. They have to set themselves apart beyond their ability. Yeah. Right. After Rocky came out, you know, for that short time, you know, my group, we were, we did all every major TV show, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas. Blah, blah. Now he talks about all the TV shows that Valentine played on. I couldn't find it. It's just not on YouTube. Doesn't mean that he's. I'm not saying he's lying, but I went to oh, Valentine right. Merv Griffin. But here he is saying here that there was a time that Valentine, the band that he was in, did play on some network television gigs. Cool. That's cool. So that should have shot them up the charts because they had that public exactly. Because right? then they have the platform. You have the platform that people are seeing you. So really, all the shit that you're saying that other people had, you had it. They just people didn't gravitate towards you. People didn't stick to you. That's all it is. Like I, again, I'm not trying to shit on you, Frank. That's not my intention. It's just the proof is in the pudding. So you did have exposure. You were mm-hmm. on national television. People didn't stick around. And then they we go back cut. to that. It, he more so because of his brother. <laughs> you know, like he had the chance to put songs in and staying alive. And everybody saw that movie. Everybody heard those songs. Like he's had more chances and breaks than the average person. Oh yeah, hundred so, percent. By his own admission, the band went on Merv Griffin, huge network show. Then he had songs featured on Rocky, huge movie. Then he right. had his songs featured on Staying Alive, big hit. And the song was a big hit. So, like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> especially back in the day, though, like, you know, it's like a comedian being on The Tonight Show. If you're in that spot, that's it. If you're good, everybody sees you and you're going to have success after that. So, what am I saying? That he's not that good. <laughs> What am I saying? That that people just like didn't many, like the music that much? Yeah, like the Stones, they were on these shows too. And guess what happened? Right, Ed Sullivan and the audience liked what they saw. <laughs> like, right, exactly. Can can we see more? Can we hear more? Can we buy more? Mm-hmm. Can you release more? The Stones would not be the Stones if nobody showed up. Right. If they wrote beat for beat Symphony for the Devil, but nobody cared about the song, then nobody cares about the song. Mm-hmm. You can't control what the audience cares about. Now it turns out people like the song, but people just didn't like Valentine songs. I don't know what to tell. Like it wasn't enough. It wasn't Symphony for the Devil. It wasn't Paint It Black. It was right. What's your and favorite Valentine song? Movie- oh, my favorite Valentine song. Oh, you know what we need to do. I've never actually listened to a Valentine song, to be honest. Okay, now you're killing me. We're not gonna get far in this episode. That's fine. <laughs> I think it's gonna be part three and four with Doug. Uh, Valentine, <laughs> Frank Stallone. Let's just do this. So I've got Frank Sloan on the on the Dinah Shore show in 1978. So this was two years after Rocky came out. I think this might be worth looking at. Okay. Yeah, that's the only TV show. No Merv Griffin. So he does mention that he's on Dinah Shore. But guess what? This was after Rocky. Now, do you think, Dom, that Frank would have ended up on the Dinah Shore show in 1978 had it not been for Rocky? No. Absolutely oh. not. That was a very quick answer. <laughs> I had to think about it for a microsecond. Here we go. So here's Frank Stallone appearing on the Dinah Shore show with Valentine. Oh, with Valentine. <laughs> not only with Valentine. Check it out. I thought perhaps you could introduce this musical group for a slide. I would be happy to. A long time ago in Maryland, there was this little boy who bought a guitar, and his name was Frank Stallone. And... Uh, then uh, I grew up with a tin ear, and he acquired all the musical talent in the family, and he's been putting it to me literally for years, saying that I was born with the voice of a frog. Well, <laughs> he was right. He was right. But he went to uh, Trenton, New Jersey, and with four other men, formed a group called Valentine, and I think it's a very, very special. They were also in the movie. They sang. They were the ones singing on the corner, and this but is you their... took a beer from. Oh, so it was actually his bandmates that were also there, too. I don't know if I quite caught that. And let's uh, mention that it's actually a Sylvester Stallone appearance on the Dinah Shore show that led to this. <laughs> yes. Frank's it's not insane. on the couch right now. <laughs> no, Frank's about to play, but that's what's amazing. They were interviewing Sly for winning best pitcher for Rocky, and Frank tagged along. Even on this, Frank wouldn't have been on this show had Sylvester not existed. Right. 
So this is Sly doing Frank a favor, saying, you know what? I'm going to get your band out there a little bit more. So I'm going to, you know, you're the singer. I'm just, a, you know, the terrible actor who is working on Rocky 2 right now. Let's advertise your band. This is your last big push here. Let's get your band out there. As you went I took a beer from and they're the one I, they spat on me and again told me I couldn't sing and I'm <laughs> paying them right who needs that so but here they are at making their I guess television debut Ooh, I thought he was on Merv Griffin see this is what I don't understand Sly says this is their television debut mm. so who's right and who's wrong here my favorite group Valentine Ooh, still <laughs> <laughs> he looks very very like <laughs> he doesn't look happy to be doing this <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm never introducing this band ever again. To Sly's credit, he's introduced Frank a few times. Remember the at the Atlantic City show? He yes, yes, and that was recent. Yeah, that was the last concert. That was the, the the final concert by Frank. Maybe Frank's right. Every time Sly introduces Frank, his career ends. You know, Sly introduces Valentine, they break up. Sly introduces Frank at the Atlantic show. He's never played again. Never played again. No. Take it back. Look at that hair. As real, as real as the time. That's as real as it gets, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. This is okay. Well, we're not going to play the whole thing. It's, uh, I'm just sorry. The moment they started singing Take You Back, I'm like, of course, the song for Rocky. <laughs> I, know, right? I didn't think it was going to be their hidden gem that was like, let it be or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Was Valentine? Did they sing that song? Was that their original track? I think it was that their original. I think, I I think is, it is. Okay. Yeah, it was. Okay. Anyways, that's amazing stuff. Frank, you're doing great. Okay. Back to the show. Pulled down. <laughs> it's like we got dropped by a record company. The group broke up. Aww. And this is after being on TV shows. And, I, and I'm serious when I'm, I'm telling you this. Do the math. Why was he dropped? Why was he dropped? Couldn't sell any albums. It's <laughs> just like any other band to be dropped. Like. <laughs> yes, of course. Your agents drop you. Yes, Dom, if, if I'm your agent and I'm trying to get work for you and no one is grabbing, like, we can't take this bald guy. We just can't, you know. <laughs> but there's no bald actors in Hollywood. What do you want from me? <laughs> you're not making me any money. All right. you're, you're taking time away. I've got this, you know, a guy, Ryan, with with hair. And, you know, and, uh, <laughs> I, I, I could get him those roles. Anyways, yeah, but so you, you got to get dropped. You're not making me any money. Yeah. You're wasting my it's time. It's just like it's just like when a, a director or a movie star they have those movies that repeatedly just don't make money. They stop giving them money. They stop putting them in movies. It's, it happens. They're like, all right, we're not giving you any more money to direct the movie. In 1978, I was playing in like these little motor ends for like 30 bucks a night on my, by myself sitting on a stool. <laughs> 2023. I was playing on these. Little <laughs> Why bring this up? Why bring this? Why advertise? You're exactly where you are now, where you were uh, in 1978, 45 years ago. Nothing. Yeah, like it hasn't gotten better. Years. You know, people don't know Frank Stallone more nowadays. It'd be like me again, uh, Dom. I've been podcasting for six years. My numbers are the same. They're horrible. Like, I, like I, they are, but I just don't bring that up all the time. Imagine if every episode was me bringing up my horrible numbers. You know what right, I mean? Right. Like people are like, "Can we stop?" Can we? Frank does have fans. That's the thing. He does have fans. Mm -hmm. I have listeners. Play to the listeners. Just stop talking about what should be or could be or isn't. Because your listeners might be like, okay, you know what? You're actually making me feel less of a listener or a fan because <laughs> I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. Drinking, not paying attention. After going from, you know, doing midnight special, rock concert. And so you have to have a, you have to have a thick skin. Are you good? I'm glad he does. I'm glad, I'm glad he's good to go. <laughs> I am when still at that because, level. I am still at that level. I've never come back from the 1978. He must, he must have a thick skin to keep this up. He must. Going from know. that great adulation to like, you know, yeah. at, at playing at like the beef and pub, you know what I mean? Or one of these places is a big letdown. So I, right. when, 
I think at this point, Lauren's Lauren's had enough. (laughs) I I know. (laughs) So we bust her heart. I I don't know what you can say at this point. I would love to be there and say something. That's the thing. I really want to interview Frank. And I kind of want to have like a, not a therapy session, but I really want to have like Frank, but you had it. And it's okay. You actually got more than 99% of the world has. The fact that you're just even a millionaire. The fact that you even, you you know, you don't have to worry about a pension. You you can travel. You can go to the bar and have a drink with your buddies. Like you're living a life. You had your own whiskey for two weeks. It's yeah, like amazing. Who could say that? <laughs> you had your face on a whiskey bottle. How many people can say that? You can see all these things. Like just embrace right. and enjoy the chaos. Save yourself the grief because the chances of getting work, especially now. I mean, they don't even audition people. You have to sit home on a phone like this and do an audition. <laughs> now he's getting to this whole don't even bother. Don't come to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Don't even do it. Don't even bother the audition via FaceTime now. Yeah, it's called technology. Things change. The world changes. This is they're like, hey, give me your go. And they can just tell where the like over a FaceTime like this, like, okay, scene. They can figure it out very quickly if you can perform on camera. And he says that with the notion that like his brother made it. You know, like <laughs> his brother made it in this business. <laughs> I don't know if the odds are uh you already got a brother and one of you makes it. That's great. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he's saying again, I didn't succeed. I didn't have success. Everyone else, just don't even bother. Don't even right. bother coming here. The good news is nobody's listening to Frank and people are showing <laughs> up. Uh, we have nice new young stars. You know, that's great. Yeah. I enjoy my TV shows. Half the actors I watch now, we're getting to the, I'm getting to the age where they're younger than me by 10, 20 years. Of course. So, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. I love it. There's some great young talent out there. Absolutely. And, and the chances are now with the animation and stuff. And I tell people, I say, now with the animation and stuff. It's like every- <laughs> I can't. I love when like Frank just goes down a spiral and doesn't know what he's talking about anymore. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Every- <laughs> 1935 when that came out. When that came out, nobody could act anymore. <laughs> animation killed the acting. There's been animation since that movie, and it All continues right. with yes, there's some credible films being animated, but they need voice actors. They need mm-hmm. humans to do the like look at Andy Circus with Gollum or the Planet of the Apes. Right, those are right. those are humans doing those movements. It's it's right, much right. easier for the animators to work with a human that can do the movements than for the animators mm-hmm. to create the movements. You need mm-hmm. humans, folks. AI ain't taking over just yet. Relax. <laughs> I said, unless you have an incredibly thick skin. Mm-hmm. And and most important, don't forget your day job because the. Ch- <laughs> well, <laughs> he's kept his exactly what I said to my son. Yeah, don't quit your day job. Don't come to Hollywood. You better have a thick skin and a thick set of hair. I think he's forgetting that too. He did have a thick <laughs> set of hair. Chances are you working or becoming famous are so slim. Honest to God, I never thought my brother. I'm, I didn't think he was, I thought he was okay as an actor. I mean, growing up, he thought my mother guy, I go, what the hell is he doing? I, such a dick. <laughs> how often do you talk about your childhood to anybody? Not not much. It's such an odd thing to do. Like, oh yeah, my bro, like I have three brothers. I don't know if I've ever mentioned right. that to you. I have three brothers. We're pretty close. Like we uh-huh. love each other and mm-hmm. they have lives and families and jobs and they're very busy and I'm very busy. Some of them, I only talk to them at Christmas time. You know, it's just right. like, hey, Merry Christmas. Love you. Hope all is well. Catch up. They have their own life. Like just because I'm your mm-hmm. brother doesn't mean we're going to spend every waking moment together. It depends where we live geographically, so forth and so forth. I don't go like, oh man, you know, my younger brother. I thought he was going to be a movie star. He, you know, he wanted to, like. <laughs> why would I equate anything about their life where they are now? But what I thought about when they were kids. Like I, I never right, had that right. conversation. Would you say he, Frank is living in the past? <laughs> <laughs> Let me sit on that for a bit. I'm not sure. sure. When he's talking about the battle of the bands from when he was 16. (laughs) He's not the only celebrity that does this. That is kind of a washed up celebrity. Why do you think they do that? Some of these celebrities, when they focus on what was glory days, glory days, the time when there was still a possibility, you know, it was like, I was on Dinah shore and I had it all. Is Dinah shore still alive? No, I think she passed away. Dinah Shore. Pa- oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? 1985? <laughs> well, pretty close. She passed away 30 years ago. Okay. She, she was 77. She passed away at the age of 77. Her death was ovarian cancer. Ooh. What's that? Oh, okay. Way to put a damper on the podcast. Sorry. <laughs> like Rocky says, she had that woman cancer. A woman kiss. <laughs> Like sitting around the house and stuff like acting. We, we thought yeah. he was ter- we thought he was terrible. You t- 
You really My do? My mother said, Frank, you better become a rock star so you can help your brother out. Uh, I swear. Oh, come on. And that, that how the ta- that? turn tables have turned. <laughs> how the turns have tabled. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> He's like, you need to become a rock star to bail your brother out. Maybe that was said, but this seems like, I mean, like whatever was said or not, but this, this is what probably Frank had in his head all along before they were famous. like, oh, I'm going to become a rock star. And then Sly just came in and swiped that. And I think that's why he has this lifetime of bitterness where he's just like, oh, you're I was supposed right. to be famous. I think we cracked the code. I think you're right. I think yeah. this is, uh, this is very telling for your last episode with us for a while. Here, uh-huh. Tom, is that there was implanted in his brain. That he was going to be the rock star. That his brother, though he dabbled in drama and acting in high school and stuff, it was never going to be. And then it just ended up being the exact opposite. And he can't let it go. Right. He can't let go yeah. of the Forever. fact that. Oh, you're so right. Mm-hmm. He probably felt felt like he was so talented. And I wish I had that confidence. I wish I was delusional. <laughs> I've worked with well, I've worked with people who have that. It's called, called the uh, Dunning Kruger effect. Okay. I, I think I'm saying it right. It's a fascinating human phenomenon. It's a, Dunning-Kruger, mm-hmm. I think, were the two scientists that discovered this. Basically, okay. when you're un- under the illusion that you're greater than you are and you live your life accordingly. People like you and I are probably pretty self-aware, meaning like mm-hmm. I'm pretty self-aware of my own abilities or incapabilities. or what, And I try to work right. at it or navigate my life. I'm not a NASCAR driver. Like I recognize right. it, so I don't drive yeah. like one. But people who have the Dunning-Kruger effect – they will think they're NASCAR drivers and they can then they think they drive it like one, but then they end up causing accidents because right. they're not a NASCAR driver. Uh-huh. So they live in a reality of they think they're better than they are, but they really believe <laughs> it. It's not a matter of, or they're sm- often smarter than what okay. they think they are, what they really are, but they act like they're that smart and they mm-hmm. seem to kind of. I definitely know some people like that. <laughs> yeah. But if you were to tell them you're stupid or you're not as smart as you think you are, they'd mm-hmm. be like, what are you talking about? Where if someone told me, Ryan, you don't know algebra, I'd be like, yeah, you're right. I don't mm-hmm. know algebra. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely but, you know, algebra. The thing is, what happened to him is one in a billion. Yeah. So can't go- I love because of one in a billion, just to even prove for the point that what happened to him wrecking my career with his success, it's just one in a billion. Like the, the fact that this happened to me, it's a bit of a victim thing to Frank. Like this happened to me. It's just one in a billion. Even the thing that happened to him is just so. Rare. I wonder. The tables were turned, and if Frank was a successful one, would he be more about, oh, follow your dreams? If it was him that it happened to, and not Sly. Okay. Let's say we lived in the alternate uh, dimension where F- Sly is is the Frank Stallone, and Frank is famous for his music, and Take You Back is a classic song. Is Frank more, yeah, do it, follow your dreams, look at me, I made it? Good question. I have an answer. <laughs> I think... The universe sometimes gives what the universe gives in that. That's what Sly's like. Mm-hmm. At least his public persona is very like, uh, life in a sunshine and rainbows. Uh, put keep you, punching. You, keep punching. Keep working. Keep going for it. Think about that. Sly, right. to his credit, at least his public persona on his Instagram, keep punching. Keep moving forward. You know, Life's mm-hmm. going to beat you to your knees. Keep doing it. And so he's got this positive fight the world. Do your best. Go for it. Go the distance. Work towards your goals. Dream the big dreams. Mm-hmm. And he won. Yes. Frank, his brother, don't bother showing up. Don't audition. <laughs> Keep your day job. You better have a thick skin because other people's successes are going to be your failures. So don't even bother showing up. Right. Let's pretend then, yes, that Frank's Valentine record was a billion sales. I think he would be like, well, when you're the best, you're the best. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> he probably would be. When the music's good, the people show up. I don't right. tell you. You just got to play like Valentine. <laughs> Not everyone can be Valentine. You know what I'm saying? But we're Valentine. Thanks for coming to the show. Right. <laughs> I would love to get a glimpse of that alternate reality, oh. what that would have been. And then Sly's like, hey, uh, Frank, I've got this you know, really cool movie idea about a down and out boxer who uh you know or a down and out singer who's trying to make it big in the world you know can i borrow some of your music ah no no, you gotta make your own stuff there i'm sorry brother you gotta (laughs) go by you know i get sometimes these stupid people on the internet going hey i got a script do you think rocky was good i go yeah i think it was pretty good it was nominated for 10 academy awards where you got something new or what jeez Holy smokes. Obviously, people that are talking to you, Frank, they're probably associates or friends because I can't just approach you and give you a script. So they're right. right. But look at the derision. Look at the derision in his face. 
Yeah, I think Rocky's pretty good. Yeah, I want ten to like tell me something I don't know. Oh, you think you got something better than Rocky? Like that's what I'm talking about. See what I'm saying? <laughs> this is what he would tell people if he was Valentine. You think you got something mm-hmm. better than me? You think you got something right, better right. than Valentine? <laughs> you think the stones right are better than Valentine? <laughs> you think the stones are better than Valentine? So he's kind of showing it there. Yeah, I've heard of Rocky. Well, you think you got something better? Okay, it's not about being better than Rocky, but maybe it's something different. Maybe it's something that's in addition to. Maybe it's something people could also enjoy. Why does it have to be better? You ever see South Paul, Jake Gyllenhaal? Yes, yes, yes. Is it better or worse than Rocky? Irrelevant. It's a good film. Right. right. It's not everything has film. to compare to something else. And that's probably what people are saying to him. It's like, hey, I've got this idea for South Paul, this film. Oh, yeah, you think it's better than Rocky? Okay, jeez, relax. <laughs> <laughs> I got this idea for a song, Frank. Oh, you think it's better than Take You Back? Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, that's just it. That's just it. Okay, well, boy, we still have this is the endless interview <laughs> so doug doug are you ready to come and doug this is my call to you doug are you ready to come in and do part three possibly part three or four um, passing the torch to doug <laughs> i'm passing the frank stallone is there any words of wisdom to give to doug dom hey, D-D. Frank, uh, yes yes uh when the going gets tough with frank you know <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta keep at it <laughs> don't be a quitter like me <laughs> Are you going to listen to the show? Yeah, absolutely. I got to follow up. I got to follow up on Frank Stallone. I got to get my Frank Stallone info. You're willing to digest the uh, Frank Stallone content. You just don't <laughs> want to consume it. I got it. <laughs> I just can't. I can't be in the in the front seat with you. I can't be your co-pilot on those. <laughs> <laughs> Old joke aside, Dom, you know, honestly, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you for coming on and doing the Ramble podcast with me for the last two seasons. Your humor, your wit your good spirits you truly are a good person i think that's why i like roasting with you because i know you as a person you're actually a mm-hmm. kind heart sweet person you don't have a mean bone in your body you've always come from a good place you've kept me in check i've amped up my humor with you because it's like man i gotta match this guy's uh, wit i love your, your skits your talents that you brought to the show the different things the different videos you brought to the show like today's episode it's gonna be missed i'm gonna get a little teary-eyed because you know you're a true partner and uh this is just a silly podcast that i do but it's been it's been an absolute pleasure working with you, Dom, and uh, I, I know we're going to rec- record again. I just, it's just, this is a an era. The era has ended, and uh, I, an era. I, I listen. I had, a, I appreciate all that. I had a great time doing this. Even the Rambo stuff. We just, <laughs> it's got so ridiculous. It was so fun. I'm always laughing. My wife's always making fun of me because how hard I'm laughing when I'm doing the podcast with you. Uh, we always had a good time. You know, like I said, I'll pop up. I will pop up. I'm not going anywhere. We're still friends. We're not leaving on bad terms or anything like that. I hope not. Uh, it's just something I. It's just something I felt I needed to do. I think I've reached a Frank Max. <laughs> That's really what it came down to. Totally understand. And I think Doug will add a new perspective and a fresh yes. perspective. It's like a. Mm-hmm. It's a cast change after you know season five of a show. We got ten more seasons. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a fresh take. You need you need a fresh take sometimes. I think I've said Absolutely. all I could say, but that doesn't mean I won't pop up at some point. I'm sure. Yeah, we'll, Dom will always we'll be welcome back, like and definitely Dom. I look, I, I can guarantee you, Dom will be on another episode. There's just no way. But take a break, <laughs> take a breather. Uh, yeah, absolutely, take a break, take a breather. Well, that concludes another episode of <laughs> Frank Stallone. Who is this guy? Ah! Ah! There's so much more to do, right? <laughs> <laughs>